All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about sketching a, a, a function, and really we're going to sketch a family of functions based on the derivative graph. So again, what we're going to be uh, doing here is we've, we're going to be given a graph of f prime, and we're going to sketch a possible graph of the original function f. Okay, so, so my first example here, um, suppose we've got the, the uh, following relatively simple derivative graph, and I'm going to do another example as well in a separate video. Um, but let's maybe start a little simple here. So my derivative graph, um, for x coordinates less than 0, the derivative is always going to be equal to negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then once we jump past 0, the value of the derivative will equal positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. So again, kind of the thing to remember again, right, is that values of the derivative, so values of the derivative, and I mean the y values, um, so the y values of the derivative uh, represent, represent, if I can spell, they represent uh, slopes of tangent lines. On, in this case, the graph of f. Okay, so the y values on the derivative represent slopes of tangent lines. So what this graph tells me, it says, well, for x coordinates less than zero, it says the slope of the tangent line is always equal to negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. It never changes. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line is always negative one. Well, what kind of graph would have, um, you know, a, a tangent line that has slope always equal to negative 1? And you can also think, you know, what would you have to take the derivative of, you know, so that you get negative 1? Well, one thing, you know, maybe we just have a, a line that goes, that looks like a negative x. So I'm going to put an open circle there, and we'll talk about that. Suppose we had the graph y equals negative x, a little piecewise function, right? For y equals negative x, the slope of the tangent line is always equal to negative 1. It's equal to negative 1 everywhere. All right, so it seems like for sure, um, you know, this, this segment of the graph would correspond to to this original derivative graph, right? So again, the slope of the tangent line is always equal to negative 1. That's what the derivative graph says. Well, if you were to have the curve y equals negative x, that does, uh, that graph always has tangent lines that have slope of negative 1 forever and ever and ever, again, up until we get to 0. Well, notice after we get past the x-coordinate of 0 on the derivative graph, it says, well, now the slopes of the tangent lines turn into positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. Well, in that case, if the slopes of the tangent line are always positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, maybe it would look like, for example, the graph y equals x. If you, again, if you think about the graph, uh, you know, if you think about the graph of the line y equals x, the slopes of the tangent line, any point on that curve are always equal to positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. And I can even shade in this point because remember, at sharp points on a graph, uh, at a sharp point we call again, those, we call them a cusp, the derivative does not exist. And notice on my derivative graph, there's no tangent line, there's no value of the tangent line associated with x equals 0. It's open and open. So this would be a possible graph. So I could even say, hey, you know, this actually looks a whole lot like the graph of absolute value of x. So if you think about the graph of y equals absolute value of x, again, tangent lines are always negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then they always become positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. And that's exactly what our original derivative graph said. Another thing that's useful to point out is if the derivative, um, you know, on the derivative graph, if the derivative graph is negative, that's going to correspond to the original function um, decreasing. So this is going to be another little useful thing. And notice where the derivative was negative. Hey, my function is decreasing, 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 decreasing as I move left to right. And then wherever the derivative graph is positive, 
that's going to correspond to the original function. It's going to be increasing. Okay, well, again, notice uh, our function is increasing, increasing, increasing. So this certainly would be a possible graph um, for a function that agrees with that derivative graph. But, you know, the point is, it's not the only graph. You know, I could easily have made a slightly different graph. And instead of, you know, having my absolute value go through the origin, just like it did, you know, you could ask yourself, what's the harm in, say, moving it up a little bit? You know, what if I move it up a little bit, you know, and make it look like that? The slopes of the tangent lines are still negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then they turn into positive 1, positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. So this graph would be another graph that has the same derivative graph that we started with. Okay, so all it is is just a shift of the absolute value of x. But again, the slopes of the tangent lines are exactly the same. So that's why we say you get what's called a family of functions. They all look basically the same. They're just going to be shifts of each other. Okay, so any one of the graphs I'm drawing here, all of those would have the same derivative graph associated with them. So this is what we uh, call, you know, a family of functions. They all have, in, in a sense, the same shape. They're just um, vertical shifts of each other. So, but again, if, if they said just draw a possible graph, that's what we did. You know, any one of these would work. You, again, you could use the one we started with. So, again, kind of a, one example here of taking a derivative graph, drawing a possible original graph associated with it. So I'll do another example here in another video. But again, the key thing to remember to me, again, y values uh, of the derivative, those are slopes of tangent lines on the original function. And again, I think also a useful trick to, to doing these. Negative y values on the derivative mean your original function is decreasing. Positive y values on the derivative means that your original function is increasing. So I think with these little guidelines, uh, it'll help you at least create a reasonable graph pretty quickly.